And now for our fourth and final module, let's dive into plan and implement an identity governance strategy. Again, pretty large section, 25 to 30%. And in my opinion, this is the good stuff for your companies about governance. Very important topic. So whether you nail it in the exam or in the real world, all good stuff. Let's talk about a catalog, which is simply a container of related resources and access packages. Catalogs are used for delegations so that non-administrators can create their own access packages. Catalog owners can add resources they own to a catalog. An access package is a bundle of resources that a team or project needs and is governed with policies. An access package is always contained within a catalog. You would create a new access package for a scenario in which users need to request access. Azure Active Directory Entitlement Management is an identity governance feature that enables organizations to manage identity and access lifecycle at scale by automating access request workflows, access assignments, reviews, and expiration. Here's another great video on YouTube exactly about entitlement management. So check that one out. Azure Active Directory Terms of Use or TOU policies provide a simple method that organizations can use to present information to end users. And we've covered a conditional access policies, but a conditional access policy must include user assignment as one of the signals in the decision process. External users can be included or excluded from conditional access policies. Azure Active Directory evaluates all policies and ensures that all requirements are met before granting access to the user. This includes any Azure B2B guests and external users, including any user with the user type attribute set to guest. This also applies to any external users signed in from a different organization like a CSP or cloud solution provider. Azure Active Directory access reviews help your organization keep the network more secure by managing its resource access lifecycle. With access reviews, you can schedule regular reviews or perform ad hoc reviews to see who has access to specific resources such as applications and groups. You can track reviews for insights, compliance, or policy reasons. You can delegate reviews to specific admins, business owners, or end users who can self-attest to the need for continued access. You can use the insights to efficiently determine if users should continue to have access. Or you can automate review outcomes, such as removing users' access to resources. Once you open the access review, you will see the names of users for which you need to review. There are two ways you can approve or deny access. You can manually approve or deny access for one or more users, or you can accept the system recommendation. You need at least as many Azure AD P2 licenses as the number of employees who will be performing the following tasks. Member users as reviewers, member users who perform a self-review, member users as group owners who perform an access review, member users as application owners who perform an access review. For guest users, licensing needs will depend on the licensing model. However, the below users, guest users activities are considered Azure AD Premium P2 usage. And that would include guest users who are assigned as reviewers, as a self-review, as group owners who perform an access review, guest users as application owners who perform an access review. Azure AD Premium P2 licenses are not required for users with a global administrator or user administrator roles who set up access reviews, configure settings, or apply the decisions from their reviews. Organizations can automate lifecycle process through technologies such as dynamic groups, coupled with user provisioning to SaaS apps or apps integrated with Azure Active Directory. You can set up recurring access reviews of users at set frequencies such as weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, and the reviewers will be notified at the start of each review. Reviewers can approve or deny access with a friendly interface and with the help of smart recommendations. 
Organizations want to minimize the number of people who have access to secure information or resources because that reduces the chance of a malicious actor getting that access or an authorized user inadvertently impacting a sensitive resource. PIM provides the time-based and approval-based role activation to mitigate the risk of excessive, unnecessary, or misused access permissions on resources that you care about. First, you need to identify your stakeholders. Next, you need to ensure you follow the principles of least privilege and delegate the rights accordingly. After cleaning up privileged role assignments in an organization, then you'll need to decide which roles to protect with PIM. And once you've decided the list of roles to be managed by PIM, then you must decide which users should get the eligible role versus the permanently active role. Permanently active roles are the normal roles assigned through Azure AD and Azure Resources, while eligible roles can only be assigned in PIM. There are four possible states in which you can place in an assignment. Eligible permanently, active permanently, eligible with specified start and end dates for assignment, and active with specified start and end dates for assignment. In many cases, even if you don't want users to have eligible assignment and activate roles every time, you can still protect your Azure AD organization by setting an expiration time for assignments. Azure AD PIM can manage the built-in Azure resources roles as well as custom roles, including but not limited to owner, user access administrator, contributor, security admin, and security manager. With PIM in Azure AD, you can configure roles to require approval for activation and choose users or groups from your Azure AD organization as delegated approvers. We recommend selecting two or more approvers for each role to reduce workload for the privileged role administrator. Delegated approvers have 24 hours to approve requests. If a request is not approved within 24 hours, then the eligible user must resubmit a new request. The 24-hour approval time window is not configurable. You can also use the PIM audit history to see all role assignments and activations within the past 30 days for all privileged roles. If you want to retain audit data for longer than the default retention period, you can use Azure Monitor to route it to an Azure storage account. Emergency access accounts are highly privileged and they are not assigned to specific individuals. Emergency access accounts are limited to emergency or break glass scenarios where normal administrative accounts can't be used. We recommend that you maintain a goal of restricting emergency accounts used to only the times when it is absolutely necessary. During emergency, you do not want a policy to potentially block your access to fix an issue. At least one emergency access account should be excluded from all conditional access policies. In Azure AD, the response to a sign-in attempt is tied to who signs in and how they access the Azure AD tenant. For example, an administrator can typically configure all aspects of the tenant when they sign in from the corporate network. The sign-in diagnostic is a feature that analyzes data from sign-in events, displays what happens, and provides recommendations for how to resolve problems. The signing diagnostics for Azure AD is designed to enable self-diagnosis of sign-in errors. To complete the diagnostic process, you need to 1. Define the scope of sign-in events you care about. 2. Select the sign-in you want to review. 3. Review the diagnostic results. And 4. Take action. The Azure Active Directory Log Analytics Views helps you analyze and search the Azure AD activity logs in your Azure AD tenant. Azure AD activity logs include audit logs. The audit logs activity report will give you access to the history of every task that's performed in your tenant. It also includes sign-in logs. With the sign-in activity report, you can determine who performed the tasks that are reported in the audit logs, or you can use Azure Sentinel's built-in connector to collect data from Azure Active Directory and stream it into Azure Sentinel. The connector allows you to stream the following log types, sign-in, audit, and provisional logs. Make sure to review the prerequisites as noted on the link. With workbooks, you can do the following. 
Understand the effect of conditional access policies on your user signing experience. Troubleshoot signing failures to get a better view of your organization's signing health and to resolve issues quickly. Know who's using legacy authentication to sign into your environment or gain deeper insights into sign-in log queries. To help you address these questions, Azure Active Directory provides workbooks for monitoring. With the Usage and Insights report, you can get an application-centric view of your sign-in data. You can find answers to the following questions. What are the top applications in my organization? What applications have the most failed sign-ins? What are the top sign-in errors for each application? Make sure once again, to check out the YouTube video in the lower right-hand corner, which discusses how to get insights into your identities with analytics and reporting. Thank you very much. I hope that this has been helpful to you. And since these are recordings, you can go back and listen to them at any time and in any sequence or order you want. Again, we'll get these slides and the links posted on my blog. Uh, within the next week or two of this being published. So that will be at aka.ms slash Mark Grimes. I'll also include those links when I update uh, the video in YouTube as well in the comments. Thank you very much. Good luck to you and happy testing.